on cornerofthegalaxy.com. It's time for another episode of Corner of the Galaxy from the Box, the show that gets you behind the scenes of the LA Galaxy and into the minds of soccer reporters and MLS experts. Your hosts for the day are Corner of the Galaxy's Josh Gessman and LA Times soccer reporter Kevin Baxter. Let's start the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy from the box on cornerofthegalaxy.com. I'm your host, Josh Gessman, coming to you on Monday, January 24th, LA Galaxy. Hey, they have a game this weekend. I mean, that's something, right? Whenever you're trying to get towards the start of the season, it's always nice to have a game. There's a game this weekend. It's a closed-door scrimmage. You won't see it, but it's going to happen. I'm sure maybe there might even be some pictures of it. It's going to be a lot of fun to sort of see how this season continues to go. Still some missing pieces on the roster. We want to talk about that. We want to clean up some news stuff that broke on Friday, get you all the way caught up through the weekend and into Monday, and take a look at those rumors that are coming down the way as well. Now, to help me, normally... It's Mr. Kevin Baxter. But on this particular day, we brought him out of retirement in order to help us. Kevin is away chasing the U.S. men's national team. It's Mr. Larry Morgan, not on Twitter. Larry, it's wonderful to see you. How are you doing? Fine, Josh. Thank you. I felt like I was almost like lost at sea and the Coast Guard came and rescued me and (laughs) and brought me into the mainland. Thank you very much. Uh, it's It's a pleasure being back on the air with you. It's it's always nice. now according to my Skype it says that we haven't haven't done one of these shows where you have been a guest host since like August 9th I believe so it's wow. been it's been that long it's been quite a while uh, well that's that's nine days shy of my birthday holy smokes see I mean we were all excited it was your birthday and then you never made it on the show again you decided to retire you threw in you were you angrily retired I no that's not how it went at all no, I put um, myself I put myself out to pasture. <laughs> It's something like that. You've been keeping yeah. yourself busy. You good? Yeah, it's just uh, it's it's kind of it feels kind of strange. Don't have to do any more transcribing of those media calls on during the week, and uh, which I don't miss at all. Right. Uh, but yeah, I, it, it does feel kind of weird being out of the loop. Although not exactly because I I do look at Kevin's uh, newsletter every every Monday, and I I know he appreciates it because nobody on his desk <laughs> reads this stuff. I can't understand why. But uh, you know, but it's always good just keeping my, it's keeping myself in the loop, so to so to speak. So thanks again for ha- having me back on. And Kevin, I guess is uh, back in the Midwest covering the U.S. men's national team. Yeah, he was oh, he was oh, he was in Denver. He's uh, he he brought enough clothing so he won't freeze because it's going to be kind of chilly back there. Yeah, so, yeah. But but again, thanks a lot for having me on. Yeah, it, no, it's great. I, I talked to Kevin today because uh, he butt dialed me from Denver. And I'm like, what do you want? He's like, I, I didn't mean to call you. I'm like, how is it that you know <laughs> you butt dial people like every single time? Like, I don't know. I get it all the time. I'm like, you used to do it to the to the general manager of the L.A. Dodgers whenever you were covering their beat as well. I go, so you used to butt dial everybody. You'd think you would figure out how to lock your phone by now. So I don't know. It's just, you know. It's one Remember, of the, this is Kevin Baxter we're talking about. I know, people. I know. We should be nice to him while he's not yeah. here, but we won't yeah. be. I mean, that's no. not that's no. not really our our way of doing things. So, um, so I, I mean, you're from afar. You're at distance. We still we still text on a fairly regular basis. I yeah. usually check in to make sure you're alive on you know every every other week or so. Sure. Um, but uh, what? Just did don't you... ask me about my Browns. Just don't ask me about them. <laughs> I was going to say, um, what have you thought of the LA Galaxy in this preseason? Some are you enough away from it that you're like, wow, there's really quiet, like it's super quiet, or has there been enough little things here and there to make you somewhat interested in what's coming up? There's, there's been enough things here and there. There's a, there been enough signings. More of Vanny continues to bring in more of his guys, which I understand. It's like when Bruce Arena took over the team in 2008, 2009. He brought in players 
who he knew, who he was familiar with and knew what he was getting. And I think Greg is doing the same thing. Uh, will that translate into a successful season? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they still haven't, they still haven't made that one monumental signing, which I think they need to make to really, to really stir the, uh, stir the pot, so to speak. So I'm still waiting on that. Right. But uh, again, I, you know, like we were talking before the season, it's kind of, I don't know. I think the jury's out of what kind of season they're going to have just because they really haven't brought in the kind of players that Galaxy fans are hoping they would bring in. But uh, it's still early. I mean, they haven't even had a preseason match yet. So, you know, we'll see what happens. But I, I'm I'm keeping keeping abreast of what, what they're okay. doing. And so far, it is... Yeah, okay. That, I think that's accurate. I think that that would be how most Galaxy fans currently classify this as, meh, whatever. Uh, as as Eric coined in the, in our uh, in our text messages back and forth, he's like, this is like the most okayest of, of it's just okay. It's yeah, just, yeah, just it, all right. You know, it, yeah. I, mean, I mean, when you think about it, and I don't mean to get Galaxy fans all riled up just like, you know, six or seven minutes into the show, but when you think about it, the LA Galaxy... You get Galaxy fans yeah. riled up? Come on, come on. You know, Mondays apparently I'm a lot more grumpy than on Thursdays, so maybe this Monday I'll be grumpy again, um, is that you look at the departure of Sebastian Legette, you haven't really replaced him. Um, you look at the, the departure of Jonathan Dos Santos. Now, regardless of what you thought of Jonathan Dos Santos, which everybody agreed he had to go at the end of last year, is that whenever he was good, he was a certain type of player. And I think you're expecting to get somebody in that position at a, you know, a certain type of player that's going to be able to replace him. And that hasn't happened either. I don't think Marky Delgado, who we're going to talk about here, is officially signing on Friday, is a replacement for either of those guys. I think it's different. Um, but the bottom line is if you have a bucket of talent that you dumped out a little bit whenever you got rid of Sebastian Legette and whenever you got rid of Jonathan Dos Santos, uh, the potential for both of those guys meant you had a high potential for talent, even if they didn't produce. When you dump that bucket out, you have not replaced that that talent yet. Right. Um, right. You know, and especially like referring to Dos Santos, who uh, just, I don't, you know, you, you, you when when he was good, he was very good. But. But when he was good, that meant he was healthy. And how often was this guy healthy? I mean, he could not stay healthy. Yeah. I mean, it seems like he almost missed as many games as he played for the Galaxy. He was he was hurt so much. It was really a shame. And, and he just did, like his brother Giovanni, just like him too. I, I mean, and really, when you look at this last year specifically, even when he was healthy, didn't necessarily contribute a great deal to the Galaxy. So yeah. I mean, you know, again, it was time to move on. And there's no yeah. Galaxy fan that was paying attention that was like oh no you have to keep Jonathan Dos Santos no it was like rightfully time to go right off into the sunset right. thank you very much and 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 move on I mean sure Jonathan sold tickets he put people in the seats Did he, he was popular were, were people that I, excited I, I, about Jonathan Dos Santos I think they were at first but I think the effect wore off as they as his career went on I think they determined that this guy wasn't what he was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. um, and just, just like I said, I thought too, it was time It was time to move on. I think it was the only way to go. But now, who are they going to get to replace him? Yeah, that's you have, the, that, and you have to find somebody who has that same potential and talent in order to do that. And uh, yeah. certainly from, from the rumors that are out there, I'm not sure uh, that's where this LA Galaxy team is heading. I know you uh, you offered to do a list of your most uh, what is it? Are we calling it overrated or the worst players? Ten most disappointing players who <laughs> I covered with the Galaxy, and I started covering the team in 2005. Okay, so in 2005. So it's yeah. it, you have a lot of years to pick from on a lot of disappointment. So I imagine yeah. we'll we'll get to that as we go. Uh, yeah, as I went we go through, through a lot this. of players. They were a lot of disappointing players. <laughs> Hey, um, some people just have really high expectations, and if you can't meet those expectations, then it can be disappointing. Yeah. Doesn't necessarily mean that the overall play was was super right. horrible, but it's, it's disappointing. Let's uh, let's get to some LA Galaxy news. One of the first things that happened um, after the announcement of Marky Delgado. Again, we're going to talk about that just in terms of uh, the final, because on Thursday night we sort of gave you the breakdown of what would happen uh, when they decided to actually get through the league and everything got signed. That happened on Friday, um, so we were able to put that in. But one of the things that happened happened was that the LA Galaxy brought back Mike Munoz. Now, if you have been following this show, uh, I think you've known this for like a month, maybe a month and a half. This was one of those things that happened early on in this off season in the start of this year. Um, and sort of, we had been following it and, and theorizing that perhaps 
Uh, Mike Munoz might be coming back to the LA Galaxy. He was with Vanny in Toronto. They have a history together, um, certainly at the RSL Academy um, and, and some other things that they have sort of done together. So it wasn't a large stretch that Mike Munoz would be coming back. Now, we even gave you the official title. Uh, Mike Munoz was named director of methodology and development, uh, and Munoz officially named to the position that, uh, uh, that we told you a while back. This is a guy whose, uh, responsibility is basically everything with the LA galaxy Academy. So when you're thinking Larry about what his responsibilities are going to be, one of the things we have to say is that he's basically the, the, the Academy director right now. Um, right. and so yeah, he, another classic case of Vanny bringing in one, one of his guys. Right. They've and known each other a long time. They've known each other a long time. They've worked together in multiple places. So this is not right. a surprise. And, and it makes right. some sense in terms of bringing Mike back to where he was. Now, you remember Mike yeah. Munoz was an LA Galaxy 2 head coach. Um, and then under Dennis DeClosa, the, uh, the contract, I think, expired. And they parted ways um, on that. And then Munoz went up to Toronto and basically worked with Vanny. So, again, it, yeah. it, it, w it made sense the whole time. Uh, let me give you some of the quotes. Uh, we are pleased to welcome Mike back to the Galaxy as our new director of methodology and development, uh, said LA Galaxy head coach Greg Vanny. Mike is a respected leader in the youth development space, very knowledgeable about the Southern California market and passionate about the LA Galaxy. With Mike in this role, I believe the integration of our playing style and methodology will flow seamlessly from the first team through the academy. Um, one of the things that we had originally talked about too, Larry, was that Mike would probably also have a say about what's going on at LA Galaxy 2 as well, trying to, again, keep this keep this single thread of play all the way from the Academy through LA Galaxy 2 and through into the first team. And with LA Galaxy 2, um, let's see, how can we say this? With LA Galaxy 2 basically having their last year until they go into the MLS Next program, which is an internal MLS league, um, this is an interesting sort of time to watch everybody. I know Dennis was a super was super hesitant about pulling the LA Galaxy uh, LA Galaxy two out of USL Championship and wanted that level of competition and wanted to stay there. Um, but everything will be transitioning into MLS next for next year um, after this. So again, this is. This is the the way that they're going. This is bringing a guy who has time with the LA Galaxy, who played for the LA Galaxy, as a matter of fact, Mike Munoz did. Um, and you bring him back and sort of put him into these roles uh, to facilitate the academy. Uh, an academy, Larry, that I think took a lot of leaps and bounds and sort of righted the ship a lot under Dennis DeClosa. It's going to be up to Mike now and Greg Vanny to continue that momentum um, and working with those players and earning that trust the same way uh, that that Dennis did for for those kids at the academy. So this is this is a really big appointment for Mike Munoz. This is a super big job in terms of what he's going to be asked to do. Now, you know, when when I first heard about the signing, I oh, Mike Munoz. He's a familiar face. Okay, I can see that. But my question with this signing is this hiring is, what does methodology encompass? I don't think it, I don't think it's it's method acting. I don't think it's that. But just what? How would they define methodology? Right. I mean, it sounds like a scientific term. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I These, mean, I could see now development. Okay, that's easy. That's easy to interpret. But methodology, I mean, huh? Is that a fancy way of, I don't know. It's a I fancy just, way of trying to define a style of play. At least that's what everybody guess, pretends yeah. it is, right? That there's a method to how we work, that there is some consistency in maybe drills or there's consistency in things and how we prepare okay. for games that is the same through the academy all the way up into the senior team. Now, that's always nice to say, except everybody puts their own spin on things and everybody does right. things differently. Everybody and, has their own method. Yeah, and this is this is always one of those things where everybody pretends that they want to unite the academy through to the to the first team, right? Everybody's always like, this is what we have to do. We have to unite it. And it's very much buzzwords. And methodology is a buzzword and development is a buzzword. And so you get that. Actually doing this to where it's the same from academy all the way up to first team. Sure. I think I think FC Dallas probably does one of the better jobs of this in the entire league, which is by the time those guys get to the senior team, they know exactly what's expected of them, exactly how things are going to go, sure. probably even how trainings are going to go because they do it. And there is some benefit to that. Um, and sometimes there's a benefit to having different people with different ideas doing different things. So again, these are, this is a huge, huge job for Mike Munoz, especially after I think the, the sort of, uh, the steering direction that Dennis and who he brought in sort of left. So now it's, 
you know, don't lose that momentum because this is where we've seen some of the right. LA Galaxy's young kids really sort of blossom. Right. With, you know, Julian Rajo, Efrain Alvarez, you have Jalen Neal in there, you know, for Kranis, sure. who we're going to talk about as well. There's all these guys who are sort of stepping up through that. You can't lose that momentum. Right. It's like the minor leagues in baseball. You want to have the same coaching style, same coaching approaches so that when the players are elevated from rookie league to single A, double A, triple A, and then finally the parent team in the major leagues, they're used to what the parent team is going to expect, how you're going to play, how you're going to approach the game. Like, yeah. Well, and, and, the, and the bottom line is that in Southern California, with the real estate that the LA Galaxy have to choose from in terms of soccer and development, there are so many kids that are falling through the cracks and not being found into these academy systems. And so, you know, one of the biggest things is how do you increase the bite of the apple that the LA Galaxy can get? Because we know there are kids playing at a park right now somewhere, oh, yeah. you know, outside the stadium that can probably school some of those academy kids. How do you identify that and how do you have the budget to be able to do that? How do the Galaxy think that they're able to capitalize on that? Ultimately, it's a business. Getting the best players in Southern California into your academy, into your LA Galaxy 2 team, into your LA Galaxy senior team, there's a reason you do that. It's to make yourself better and to develop right. talent that you can sell to other teams right. eventually as well. It's um, such a fertile ground in SoCal as far as soccer. So it's there are good players everywhere. Just like I said, there's probably kids who slip through the cracks unjust unjustly unjustly so. And just it's really it's just a galaxy's job to go out and find these guys. And it's also the guy. It's also the job of the LA Galaxy to steer these kids in the best direction possible. Um, certainly, when Dennis was here, Dennis did a sixty-minute-long talk that we had on this program about youth development. If you haven't listened to it, go back and watch it. But we have seen this. Um, we have seen the LA Galaxy lose players to wild dreams of going to Europe and watching kids not make it and then basically crashing out. We've talked about if you're not playing through all these years, how you miss time. This is up to Mike Munoz and Greg Vanny now to capture these guys, Larry, um, and and make them feel comfortable within the LA Galaxy that they're going to be able to develop the best way they can. You're not going to be able to keep all of them. You never can. But uh, some will fall through the cracks. I think everybody thinks, you know, that you're going to get you, you're going to miss on some of these. Absolutely. But hopefully you hit on more than you miss. And hopefully this becomes, you know, a way for the LA galaxy to garner not only first team players, but revenue. All I hope is that, is that Greg and Mike have unlimited gasoline and phone cards because <laughs> they're going to be, they're going to be busy trying to find these guys. I don't envy them at all. I could see trips up to uh, Morro Bay or Carpinteria, or yep. it's not fun, or El Centro. It's not fun going to these places out in the Tules. It really isn't, but you got to do, do it. The amount of geography you have to cover just oh. in Southern California is massive. Exactly. I mean, look at like the Netherlands, if you, or, you know, some, some other small European country. Or Iceland. Or Iceland, right? You're trying to scout guys. You go to two games on Saturday, you got yeah. 50% of the population. That's yeah. not how you this go works. go down the street. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Um, Mike said, uh, uh, let's see, did I read this? He's, he said, I am honored and excited to return to the LA Galaxy family. Did I read that one already? I can't remember if I did. I think you did. Okay. Well, anyway, he says he's, uh, I'm going to read it again. I'm honored and okay, excited ahead, to return sure. to the go LA ahead. galaxy family. I'm thankful to Chris Klein and Greg Vanny for the opportunity. Said Munoz, there is an incredible amount of talent in our Academy system and Southern California. I look forward to guiding the LA galaxy Academy to being the best in North America. Maybe I didn't read it. I've read it in my head like seven times. So, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's good. By the way, Mike, Mike Gray did call you out, uh, appropriately for the phone cards thing. Nobody has a phone card. They just have a cell phone anymore. What do you, what do you what's a phone card? People I are, well, I, okay. Okay. I'm old. I know. Yes, I'm it was, it was good. It, it was, it was perfectly acceptable uh, to say that. So that is the Mike Munoz. Again, I think this is going to be, um, super interesting to watch. This is one of those things that you can't fail in this position because you lose so much momentum. You're going to lose players. You're going to do a whole bunch of things. So, I mean, Mike Munoz has a tremendous amount of pressure that's being put on him right now to make sure that the momentum is carried forward and that things yeah. keep going. The good news is that I covered LA galaxy two during the time when Mike Munoz was the head coach. So I've talked to him already. Um, and I've asked him if he wanted to come on the show. He does want to come on the show. He wants to get his head around everything. And then he'll come on here and explain uh, his vision and, and sort of what he's going to do and stuff like that. So you can have that to look forward to. Mike is a great guy. I, I'm fortunate enough to know him. Um, you know, a lot of times, again, we're putting... Does anybody on the galaxy not want to go on your show? Yes, there are. Yeah? There, oh, yes. Uh, I can... Oh. I, yeah, I, I yeah. Think yeah I was going to say... Think of one guy. Yeah, there you I go. Think of okay. one guy. I was, I was going to say, really? There's, there's definitely one guy. The so. initial JK, sure. <laughs> I'm not saying. I would never say. 
True. Um, but but yeah, I would I would guarantee that uh, he doesn't want to come on the show. But other than that, there's <laughs> there's probably some others who probably don't want to be on the show as well. But most of the people I think I get. I have always said personally, I get along with almost everybody. Whenever it comes to that stuff, it's just I have to be critical. If if Mike Munoz doesn't do a good job, we're going to be critical of that job that's going on there, yeah. right? Even even though I think as he's a great as guy. Not mean spirited. There's nothing wrong with being critical. No, and so I think that's that's those things that you have to sort of you know put in the thing. Chris Klein is a great guy. Always said it. Super nice. Really really nice to to talk to, and he'll always um, you know have a second for you and say hi, shake your hand, that type of thing. I'm critical of what he's done since 2017 because the LA Galaxy have made the playoffs the one time in within that within that time, um, and they haven't even sniffed an MLS Cup or really any sort of dangerous playoff run, even in the one year that they they did win a playoff game. So, I mean, that's the critical part of this. It is, all comes down to it. Dan Beckerman gets le- looped into that as well. Show me what you've done, Dan, because it's not a lot. So, how do you want how do you want that to be looked? At, yeah. I, at, a lot of times we get asked, you know, somebody within organizations can be like, well, how do we get better press coverage? Well, winning would be would be a good start when th- when people are winning. It's really easy to write stuff and be positive about things when you're not winning. Then th- then everything comes up to the surface. And I, I think for the most part, everything's fair game. So, uh, you know, I, I was going to ask, you know, speaking of Chris and Dan, whose contracts are up after the season, how would you gauge the pressure on them this season? It's got to be on on who, on which ones? Sorry, Chris on, and Dan, Chris oh, Klein and Dan Beckerman. I mean, it's got to be. From I what, wouldn't want to be in their shoes. From what we understand, they're both in contract years. Um, so yeah. this is this is huge. Now with Dan, it's more than just the LA Galaxy, though, as well, right? With Dan Beckerman, it's about what the LA Kings are doing and what AEG right. is doing and all those right. things, and whether or not he's the right guy to lead AEG. And it's not just about the LA Galaxy. But I'll tell you this right now. It's funny whenever you compare the LA Galaxy and Toronto FC and sort of how things took off and how they got really good and how that was. You can point to one person who was a go-getter and got out there, and that's Tim Laiwiki, right? And I'll exactly. tell you right now, Dan Beckerman is no Tim Laiwiki. No. Right? And and so when you say that, though, it's like, okay. Not nearly well, as tall as Chris Klein. Well, <laughs> yeah. It's um, Tim Laiwiki, whenever you, whenever you talk about him. The reason Toronto was so good is because he went out and he spent a lot of money and he had this thought and foresight to say, we need to do something big in order to capture the attention of what's going on here in Toronto. What do you do with the LA Galaxy? We need to do something big big in order to capture the attention right. of people in Los Angeles. We need to we do need it the splash. right way. We need to do it in the right way too. We need, we're going to spend a lot of money, but we're going to we're going to be winners when we do it. And Tim Laiwiki was always involved in that stuff. Look at what Toronto's doing right now with the the Insigne uh, 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 signing, right? Spending Fantastic big, signing. Si- signing big dollar players. Are you telling me the LA yeah. Galaxy can't do that? That's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. So who's going to be ambitious? Whenever we uh, whenever we talked about one of the rumors that ended up not being true, which was the Teji Savagne, um, the central midfielder in France, right? Playing France. for Mont- Montpellier. Um, oh, your French is getting better and better. Just, I, I, you know, with this team, you have to know your French. You're going to sign a new French guy every, every Soy other bon, day. Soy bon. Um, but whenever you, you're talking about how ambitious that was, because here's a guy who's ranked one of the top central midfielders in Ligue 1, right? He, he was like one of the players of the month. Um, for that league, you're talking about captain a tra- of that team too. Captain of the team, you're talking about a guy who plays. You know this that that's him. That's what ambitious looks like, right? Whenever you're talking about that, this what's going on now. We'll see how it goes. But right. this is that's what we're all waiting on. Is that big signing, the Beckham signing, the Keane signing, the Donovan trade? We're waiting for that big, big player move. And, it it takes ambition. I'm not I'm, yeah. I'm not sure that I don't not sure that there's a. Uh, a temperament or a willingness to take that kind of money and that kind of risk, even though I think that's a more safe bet than going after a 31 year old who has a history of injuries. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, <laughs> let's talk a little bit and, and close up the, 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 the signing of Marky Delgado, uh, LA galaxy announced it on Friday. We announced that it was, we were the ones who broke that news as well. Uh, we announced that it was a targeted allocation money signing. Uh, it was so Tam signing, uh, there again, levels, different levels of Tam, right? If you pay a guy one dollar over a over the max budget, he could be a Tam player. That's probably not what's happening here. But having I'm said glad that, you can keep track of this stuff because I can't. That's another <laughs> thing I will not miss being retired is keeping tra- track of the Tam and the Gam and the Spam and the Ham and whatever. I just I won't miss that at all. Yeah. Um, it, uh-uh. it, it's, it's annoying, but again, that's, that's, this is where <laughs> I thrive. 
This is where I thrive. It's it's one yeah. of the things. So uh, he is a TAM signing. Uh, he gets, by the way, it was funny because I was guessing what his contract was going to be. I didn't know. So I was typing it in my spreadsheet so I could keep track of it. And I'm like, I'm guessing it's probably a three year signing because of his age. Three years plus one. It ends up being three years plus one. Uh, his good. salary is above the one point six million dollars so that we know. We don't know how much he's making. Um, how are you on stocks? <laughs> no, not very good at all. Oh, okay. um, so Marky Delgado comes in. Uh, as we joked around about at the beginning, uh, it's an okay signing. Uh, Marky Delgado is an incredibly hard worker. I, I think... saw highlights. I like his motor. It just, it won't stop. I, I, I like his effort. I like his determination. It's very impressive. I, I think that it is, um, that's going to be his big selling point. That and his pressure, the pressure that he applies whenever yeah. he's playing defensive side of things in the midfield. So Something uh, that was missing in the Galaxy midfield, not only last year, but... But For forever, the past few years, yeah. yeah. It, well, since Nigel De Jong, probably. So, That's right. You know, K- Perry Kitchen, I exactly. thought, always did a great job in, as a yeah. defensive midfielder role. But he's also he goes all over the place to destroy people like that type of thing. Yeah. So he's not predictable in where he's going to be. Right. I think Marky Delgado is a little more disciplined um, in that. A uh, okay signing, not going to give you any offensive threat. So where's your offense coming from? Well, Chicharito, right? You're hoping Kevin Cabral can can get on the score sheet as well. Those are your Yo, two. Butch. Yeah, those are your T guys. Jovalich perhaps getting a lot more time this year. He better. Otherwise, why'd you go out and bring him in for a whole bunch of money right. if you're going to sit him on the bench? So Jovalich in there. Um, you know, you hope Grand Sir gets a little bit more, but are you, are you going to ask Victor Vasquez to score more goals? Are you going to ask Sasha Kleshin to score more goals? There's somebody has to be scoring from the midfield, and I'm not sure who that's supposed to be right now um, yeah, because I, mean, I don't think they have it. Unless you're Zlatan Ibrahimovic, you can't ask a guy who's 35 or 36 who'd be one of your main goal scorers. You can't do it. No. And and so uh, for me, I have to sit there and say, okay, well, then let's go ahead and, you know, you need another central midfielder that's going to do something. Um, yeah. So, you know, certainly the rumors around that are are some, and we could talk about it, but Mark, Mark Delgado is not going to be that guy. And so you can't expect him to be that guy, which is why signing Marky Delgado, Larry, doesn't replace Jonathan Dos Santos. No. And doesn't replace Sebastian Legette, you know? And so again, the Galaxy and releasing guys have gotten worse, not better, right? Now, overall, team... team, uh, team. I think losing Legette made the Galaxy worse. Bo Santos, okay, but losing Legette, I think, was the one that hurt yep. more than losing Dos Santos. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Well, there's more potential there still for Legette than there was for Je- Dos right. Santos. So you, right. But still... Legit didn't really fit into the system. Now, whether or no. not Vanny can make him do that or how that works. By the way, we got to give a shout out to uh, Herb again. Uh, Herb in our memorial chat room. Uh, Herb gave us a $50 uh, super chat. So thank you, Herb. We appreciate that. Thanks, he Herb. goes, shout out to Josh for giving us our Galaxy Fix. Shout out to Mr. Larry Morgan, not on Twitter. Hope you're enjoying retirement. Hashtag Herb Memorial. That's that's our big joke, Larry. Is <laughs> the Herb Memorial uh, Herb chat Memorial room. for, for a guy who's alive. Okay, yeah, I understand. Perfect. Yep, you got it. So uh, thank you, Herb. As always, we appreciate it. Um, yep, thank you. So, I mean, you know, you say all these things. So when are they going to get better? Because I think that they've gotten okay, but have they gotten better? They're not, no. they're not a better team it's, yet. It's almost flatlined. Uh, and, you're just waiting for that, for the EKG to show a, to show an increase. But yeah, it's sort of, you know, it's, it's very, eh, right. Yeah. It's, just, it, yeah. It, as, as, as we said earlier, it's just, eh, you know. It's it's one of these things that is that you have to continue to address because Vanny said he wanted everybody in camp so they could start training. Well, the LA Galaxy have their first preseason game coming up on Saturday. There are only 34 days, almost less than a month, 34 days Incredible. until the LA Galaxy hosts New York City FC, the defending MLS Cup champions, by the way, who didn't need to get better. OK, they just need to be as good as they were last year, and they have a very good chance at beating everybody again. Doesn't okay. it feel like like the regular season just ended like last week? It did. Imagine if you're I one mean, of those yeah. teams in the MLS Cup, though. Like if you're imagine if you're New oh, York yeah. City FC, you're like, did I get any time off? Like, did yeah. I did they get what like four four weeks off and then they're back and wow. and training? Um, I don't feel sorry for them. They make too much money. <laughs> Some of them do. Some of them so, do for yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's for sure. So anyway, so with the signing of Marky Delgado, the LA Galaxy are just okay, and I think that's going to be a good workhorse signing. I think he's going to be a guy who starts a lot of games, plays a lot of games, and I think the LA Galaxy are hoping that he elevates his game as he sort of hits that 
that that peak of his you know age right he's in his prime right now you're there right. 26 27 you are hitting that's it a good early, age right and so you're gonna carry him through for three plus one years right so three years you at least have him under contract you're hoping that he develops and becomes a little bit more of a threat but his job in toronto was to get the ball and then get to Victor Vasquez as quickly as possible. Well, who does he have? He has Victor Vasquez in there. The only problem is everybody's a little bit older again, right? So you can't Vasquez expect... Vasquez cannot go 90 minutes. He no. Cannot, he can't... He could probably go 60, maybe? Yeah, I mean, I think 60 on some occasions, but, you know, more than likely he comes off the bench in, in a lot of cases. Yeah. I mean, like Sasha Kleschen, I think, ended up playing 31 games or something like that. Having said that, he only started like 17 games, right? So there was a, there's a lot of that. So... Um, this is the LA Galaxy need to be better um, in terms of that. Now, they still have, I think, two TAM signings and one DP signing. There's a chance to still make this team better. Uh, the DP has to be a home run, though. And if the Galaxy That's don't go home. out and spend, they spent $2 million roughly a year on Jonathan Dos Santos. Remember, this is one of the top 10 richest teams in all of football. And they spent that $2 million. That wasn't exactly dollars. money well spent, in my opinion. No, it wasn't. Okay. No. And, and certainly. Um, Patrick, by the way, gives us a ten dollars super chat. Says one, I am not Herb, and two, this show kicks butt. I, I changed it to make PG. So thank you, Patrick, for not being Herb. Thank you for the super chat as well. Thank so you, Patrick. We we appreciate that. All these people chipping in—it's unbelievable. I, mean, how, they, I told them. Wow. I told them it was going Gosh, to. Your they love you. They no, love you. I, I told them it was going to your retirement fund, your medic, your Medicare uh, I haven't Plan seen B. A cent of it. I, if it is going into that fund, I haven't seen a cent. Um, and so. Uh, there's there's a lot of stuff to sort of you know pay attention to with this roster and they have a chance to make it, um, but I it just give me that killer instinct. Why why aren't you going after guys like Savanier in 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 France? Why aren't you going after got big name guys who are still in their prime? You have the ability to do it. There seems to be almost this unwritten rule that well you're spending seven million dollars or six million dollars on Chicharito, Larry. So I can't go out and spend you know f another eight million or nine million dollars on the second DP. Right, because as far as I'm concerned, there's that you have one DP with with Chicharito, you have a second DP, and then you have a young DP in Kevin Cabral. Well, you're saving some money on Kevin Cabral. All right, you probably overpaid for him, but we'll see how he get does this year, and we can sort of look at that a little bit more. Um, the 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 big deal now is you have a chance. You could pay somebody more than Chicharito. What nobody's saying you can't. That's how expensive. That's how, uh, and I don't want to say expensive, but that's how much worth a designated player spot is. You can pay him any amount of money you want. And again, do the Galaxy want to do that? You know, speaking of Cabral, I had to laugh when I heard Vanny call him a wet noodle, wet noodle. When, he came to, when he came to the team last year. I mean, thanks a lot, Coach. A thanks accurate. for the kind words. Accurate. As Sophie said it last was, Thursday, uh, uh, it was, she goes, it's good that Greg knows that he can, it's good that Greg knows that he can do that. Like, he feels comfortable saying that, knowing Kevin probably has already been told that, and that Kevin has already gotten better, according to Vanny. So, um, he's probably also gotten ripped by his teammates for it too. He oh, just, I mean, she's mercilessly probably. I mean, I was looking up how to say wet noodle in French. So that way you could like put it on a t-shirt. I'm not going to do it. Somebody in the chat room, by the way, says we, we don't need a wet noodle. We need an al dente noodle. That's what we need. Just a, a little, a little tougher. All right. I like uh, it. They're very, like it. very good. Uh, David, by the way, a $2 super chat says this is for Larry and coming out of my retirement. So see, he's giving you $2 from his retirement. So thank you, David. We appreciate that. Larry will not see a cent of that. YouTube will see more of that than Larry does. That's for sure. Um, so, so yes. Uh, so that's where we sort of sit now. Something that the galaxy did do something we theorized about last year, Larry, the LA galaxy, they took the road and the show over to the Rose bowl in Pasadena. There um, you go. I thought this was really cool. I am a, That's, I am I used a to cover the LA Aztecs there about 40 some odd years ago. I, so there's been this big argument, certainly in our discord. And I think some, maybe, maybe even on the podcast a little bit, certainly within LA galaxy Twitter as well, is that there's so much of this sit, well, five MLS cups. We won five MLS cups. We, there's so much of this since 96. There's so much emphasis on the past uh, and trying to sell the past almost as the present, Larry, that it gets a little much, especially for a team that's only had one one playoff game and made it to the playoffs once in the last you know five years. Um, so there's there's almost this this pushback against stuff that's trying to look back and and almost monetize or use the history of the club in a positive way um, to sort of you know to to make this happen and to make fans feel you know connected and stuff like that. 
And here the LA Galaxy go. They go to the Rose Bowl. They go in the stadium. They run up and down the hills of Pasadena, which is something that the original 96 team did. Greg Vanny talked, hope, talked about last year. They, and hopefully they didn't get lost. Uh, yeah, I mean, because that's always the case around there. Uh, it was funny, though, because I think Kevin Hartman said one of the hills that they were running on, he goes, well, he goes, you know, it's nice to see that even after all this time, 26 years, uh, that this hill still makes professional athletes heave. Uh, <laughs> you know, and it's like, it, it's it's a lot of fun. So, I mean... In some way, if you wanted to be super cynical, you could say, oh, the LA Galaxy went to Pasadena to capitalize on this historical currency that they have uh, and to get fans excited about it, right? And, you know, and because we eat that stuff up. That's the, that's the idea yeah. is that, that this is supposed to be, you know, uh, nostalgia and you just eat it up. You know, just, just imagine being one of the young guys on the team or being one of the Europeans on this team and you're going to be training in the Rose Bowl, you know, and they walk inside this massive facility, which is a fantastic venue, not a, not a bad seat in the house, even though it holds like more than a hundred thousand and they're sitting and they're, they're training there. They're, they're looking around and seeing how big this place is. But just imagine what that place is like when it's packed, yes. when it's full. I mean, the atmosphere is just electric. I mean, all I have to do is look back to the world cup in 1996 to see what it was like. I mean, just, it, it must be almost overwhelming what they're feeling is is like in there, especially when it's, you know, just fantastic opportunity just to see what that place was like. And, and, and as, as covering the LA galaxy over the years, we've seen games against teams like Manchester United or Real Madrid. Real Madrid sure. right? Yeah. I mean, and you can, when go they there. had 80, 90,000 there. Sure. Yeah, I think Barcelona as well came in and Barcelona, played. Barcelona, yeah. sure. So, sure. I mean, we have seen this before we have, we have been there and you know that it is. Here's where I push back against the, um, against this whole thing that it's just nostalgia for nostalgia's sake. You currently have a team that doesn't have any LA Galaxy players who know really what it's like to win an MLS Cup as an LA Galaxy player. Um, you have guys who, quite honestly, have a pretty large separation between 1996 when this LA Galaxy team was first you know, conceived of, and MLS first conceived of, and now in 2022, right? That's a huge gap. There are some guys who, who didn't, weren't born, who weren't born. Exactly. Right. And yeah. so you have, you have guys on this team that, that don't understand that there is a weight associated with putting on an LA galaxy Jersey, whether that was, you know, in the 96 days or whether that was, you know, in the 2011s and 2014s. Right. And so this, this, what they're doing here serves a dual purpose, but the, but the biggest purpose is that you got guys like Greg Vanny and Dan Couchman and uh, Kevin Hartman, who played on those 96 teams, 96, 97 in that era, yeah. that were at the Rose Bowl, who played games for the LA Galaxy, who understand what it means to put on the LA Galaxy shirt, to be successful, and to command the audience that a place like the Rose Bowl did. This is something this team has to learn. This is something that this team has to respect. This is something this team has to understand that when they put the jersey on, that there is expectations that come with it. And I think going to a place like this, knowing that at many times during the LA Galaxy's history, that every seat was filled in those stadiums, right? There's some, there's something to this. There should be a team bonding, a team building, a team understanding. You're talking about trying to take all of these people and meld their consciousness into you know, one, Larry, you're trying to get one team that plays together, that understands the responsibility that comes with performing your best every single game. This is Greg Vanny team building right now. This is not Greg Vanny just doing that. Great. The cameras are there. That's fine. If there were no cameras, Greg Vanny still would have had these guys out at the Rose Bowl. Right. And, you know, you know, and, and with this team building, I'm sure they weren't thinking this team building or team bonding. I'm sure they weren't thinking of when, when they were trying to negotiate these hills with that without heaving or falling over, just, you know, asking for mercy, just, uh, but, but you're right. I mean, something like, like this, you know, especially in a facility like the Rose Bowl, it cannot, it cannot do anything but help mold the team, help make the team tighter. I mean, it had to, e e even though it was a workout, a hard workout, it had to have been a lot of fun for these guys. It yeah, had to be very, very special. It looks like they got, I was, they, it showed them having lunch. Uh, if you go to the LA Galaxy Twitter account, you can see them. It showed them having lunch and, you know, they had a lunch and they had a salad and stuff like that. I'm yeah. hoping they did that after the running. <laughs> yes, I, I mean, would hope so. I would hope that that's how, how it sort of went and how it sort of ran. But I always think, I mean, imagine, I don't live up in Pasadena. Um, and I also hope that the catering cost for all that food does not come out of their paycheck. So. <laughs> I, I don't live up near Pasadena. I don't 
I don't go up there very often. You and I have talked about it's it's a pain to get there and it's a pain to get out. But when That's you're right. there, it's one of the nicest places um, in terms of watching a game. And I think you're yeah. right. Just the flat sort of bowl that is, you know, the Rose Bowls is is, is a very good seat to all these things. So, um, you know, it's it's about changing things up. I think that was the important thing, too, is these guys get bored doing the same thing every day. And I was talking to, um, yeah. I was talking to some players over the weekend, just sort of taking their temperature on going to the Rose bowl. Um, and, and one of them, uh, was very impressed by the entire thing, just in terms of going there. What an amazing, you know, understanding the history behind it and seeing it. And, yeah. you know, it, it's really stood the test of time. It, it has, that old, it really has. And so this is, you know, this is one of those things that you look at and say, okay, this is, it changed things up. It got the teams together, the team building. They were playing cornhole, it looks like, <laughs> out on the, the field at the Rose Bowl, which is cool. Yeah. Um, you know, just the the videos that you get of, of different things. And I grabbed one of Jonathan Bond as he was sort of walking out there and everybody with their phones out. I mean, this is, you can't tell me if you're if you're going out there and walking on the field, you're not getting your phone out like these like these guys are doing. I mean, we're all sort of that, that same thing. So um, I wonder how Jonathan Bond would compare the Rose Bowl to, say, Wembley Stadium. Yeah, I mean, I think they're different, and I'm, I'm certainly, I think, yeah. you know, from where he grew up, I would imagine that he finds Wembley the better place. Sure. I mean, and I don't have an argument against that. Yeah. Um, but I just thought it was it was cool to sort of see these guys um, doing these things and, and going there and, and, and enjoying it. By the way, a little $5 super chat from uh, Raphael says, hey, Larry, reminiscing is great, but it's time for new memories for the G's and the Browns. So see, he wants, he, he gets, it's time for the Browns too. He was trying. Um, I hope he's right. <laughs> hey, keep our fingers crossed. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. So I, you know, if you want to argue that the retro thing is just trying to appease people, uh, that's fine. And I get it. And you can argue that with whether it's shoes or anything else and sort of jerseys and, you know, the community kit and trying to throw it back and trying to go retro and trying to build on the history. I get that from a marketing perspective. That's fine. But, but also, as you just said a moment ago, anything to break up the monotony of training camp is welcome. I don't care what sport it is. Any change of pace, change of venue, change of scenery is always welcome. It yeah. always is. Yeah, those... I'm, Didn't I mean to interrupt you. No, it's fine. Uh, I wanted to get to uh, international duty a little bit here before we talk about the, the rumors and get to your list, Larry. So I want to make sure we do both of those things. Um, international duty, we talked about it on Thursday, but just wanted to again give you an update. Julian Araujo is training with Mexico ahead of their World Cup qualifiers. Uh, they are playing host to, let's say, excuse me, they're traveling to face Jamaica on Thursday, January 27th at 4 p.m. Pacific time, playing host to Costa Rica, Costa Rica at Estadio Azteca on Sunday, January 30th. Um, and squaring are, off against are fans allowed there this time. Um, I don't know. I think That's, they are. I think okay. they are. Uh, and it was the first two qualifiers that weren't allowed to the, the home home matches and squaring off against Panama at Estadio Azteca on Wednesday, February 2nd at 7 p.m. Pacific time. There's a good chance. I think Julian Araujo sees some time. Um, he was one of the better players the last time they played friendlies. Um, so we'll see if he can sort of, uh, continue that. And, and really this is all about building his confidence for the year for the LA galaxy, which is why we talk about it. Larry and I were quickly going back and forth. Is, is there a time I'll leave this to the chat room because I couldn't think of one off my top of my head, but has there been a time any time during LA galaxy history where they didn't have a U.S. an active U S men's national team player on the, on the, the roster, like Landon Donovan covered so many of those years, Kobe Jones covered so many of those years that there may have been some time in between, uh, where things got a little bit off the top of my head. I can't think of one and there isn't currently yeah. one right now. That's a, that's a very good question. Where's Chris Tucker when you need him? That's a, that's a very yeah, good Chris, question. Chris, Chris would probably know that. That's a, that's yeah. a good question for him. I will, I will uh, make sure we do that. Um, so uh, Marcus for Kranis and Galaxy Academy goalkeeper uh, Kamani Dade um, were named to the U.S. U-20s men's youth national team for January training camp. Um, that's one of the first times that, that Dade's name has sort of popped up on any of this. Uh, just briefly in our Discord, people were discussing him. Apparently a very good goalkeeper, so good to see him up with the U.S. U-20s. He's Academy graduate. Also, uh, goalkeeper Anthony Ramos with Real SC is a Gal LA Galaxy Academy uh, former player uh, and defender. Everybody remembers this. Mauricio Cuevas uh, with Club Bruges right now is also a former LA Galaxy Academy player as well. Those guys also be churning the, them out, man. They really in, have in those U20 men's youth national teams uh, yep. for for that one. So that's where we sit 
um, with that one. We talked about the closed door scrimmage coming up, Larry, Saturday, January 29th against Toronto FC. This game is 11 a.m. I'm not sure where they're playing it. Um, they're playing it at Dignity Health Sports Park. Larry and I were talking about it. They may be down on the U.S. soccer fields. Uh, it may be inside the stadium. I don't know how they're going to do it, um, but I'm told it will not be broadcast. So you can you can tell everybody um, it will not be broadcast. All right. So everybody calm down. You're there. You're good. OK, because I'm, I'm going to get this question 30 or 40 more times. So I'm just trying to head off as much. as It's not going to be broadcast this one. Um, I wonder if anybody will, will try to fly a drone over the uh, over the field as they play and get video that way. They you very well could. Very well know. could. Yeah. Um, so anyway, it was, uh, it was just one of those things, um, that, that we sort of keep an eye on. Um, but that one's not, then the LA galaxy will host the new England revolution on Saturday, February 5th. You can buy tickets to that game. Then they go out Bruce to the back. Yeah. Yeah. Against Bruce and special and jet. Um, and let's see, is Botang still there and Omar oh, Gonzalez and AJ De La Garza. So yeah. Um, galaxy enjoy, East. yeah, <laughs> enjoy that one. Um, that would be coming up, and then they'll head out for the Empire Polo Club games. Uh, I'm currently planning on going to the Sunday, February 13th game to cover the Galaxy, where they play the New York Red Bulls um, out at the Empire Polo Club. It's a drive. We'll see if that oh, ends up right. happening, but uh, I'm I'm going to try to go cover that and at least get an, get my eyes on the team um, during that that Empire Polo Club time. So hopefully, hopefully the weather will be accommodating. Yep, uh, it'll probably be a million degrees. I'm not worried. Um, or, well, hopefully it doesn't rain. You never know. That's, hey, that's how, uh, that's how it goes in our winter here. So um, that's yep. sort of what's coming up. So the LA Galaxy, again, 34 days away from starting their regular season. Uh, the, pro, the preseason games are going to start coming, and they'll actually happen fairly quickly here for the rest of this, uh, this preseason. And again, they'll wrap it all up on February 19th, the last preseason game against DC United, and you can buy tickets for that one, um, that one at Dignity Health Sports Park. Who wants to talk rumors, Larry? Do you want to talk rumors? Sure. All right, good. Um, Anything about the corner of the... Anything about the COG rumors or anything or no? No, no. I mean, okay. th there's there's nothing important there. But let's talk about okay. the, the the Galaxy rumors. I have two sort of things. I, I'll say this. The Douglas Costa signing is still picking up steam. That seems headed towards um, a, a resolution of some sort. Now, speaking to some people today, there's obviously this big discussion about whether TAM or designated player. Um, I'm getting a lot of DP sort of prognostications. We'll see if that ends up happening. I'm not ready to settle on any of this because I just... I don't feel comfortable in in saying, oh, well, they're definitely going after him, him as a DP or they're definitely going after him as a as a TAM player. Uh, remember, uh, Costa is is 31 years old, history of injuries, uh, and certainly there's some motivational questions. One of the very talented players, um, you know, whenever he's motivated and wants to play, uh, I don't know that you can hold his motivation of being in a second tier Brazilian league for Grêmio um, against him in some ways, but I'm also not willing to just say, it's it's not a huge gamble by the LA Galaxy, um, especially if they're going yeah. after him on a on a designated player contract. I mean, you certainly have to, you know, with his with his injury background, they better be crossing all the all the T's and dotting the I's and doing all they can to look into his background. I mean, the, the, the last thing they need is to bring in a DP who just who misses so much time that they can't get the money's worth. They, wow, that's. That's a very, uh, very touchy landscape to be uh, to be walking on there. Um, it was funny because uh, one. But of is our, he worth the risk? Is he worth the risk with his track record? What one he, one he of very our well could be one of our listeners says rather have Diego Costa than Douglas Costa, and you we and I were talking about Diego Costa as well. So yeah. before this, but um, this is I, I mean we just talked about a whole bunch of things. I kind of went on a little rant talking about ambition and the, what the LA Galaxy can do. Um, if this is a designated player signing, I, I mean, I don't have a lot of temperature for this outside of this. And, and I've said this, I think on Twitter and I've said it on the discord in some places. So I'll say this here. If the LA galaxy could get Douglas Costa and Christian Pavone, and one of them is a TAM player, or one of them is a DP player, and it doesn't matter which is which, because I, I think that's business being done. I think that's good bit of business. If you get one or the other, however that ends up happening. If you get Pavone as a designated player and Costa is a, a TAM player, then great. I think that you did a great job. It's a home um, run. Yeah. I, if you get Pavone on a TAM deal already, that's like, wow, you did a great job. So that, and then you could have Douglas Costa as a designated player. Um, and you might be able to float one on TAM until next year, whenever Chicharito's contract is up and possibly moving somebody into that. Those are all things that you can do. Here's the problem though. And I'll say this carefully and delicately. Um, I think the Pavone rumors are overblown and I don't know that there is interest from him in coming to Los Angeles. 
I've talked to some people. I, I take what they say seriously. I can't say definitively either way. Certainly it's not like first, firsthand knowledge, right? This isn't, you're talking to Christian Pavone and he's saying, I'm not interested in coming to LA. That's not what this is. But there's people who are theorizing, who know better than me, who are closer to things that are like, I don't know that that's necessarily going to happen. So if we, if I just said that if you get Costa and you get Pavone and one is a DP and one is Tam that you did good business. Well, if you sign Costa as a designated player and you're not getting Christian Pavone as a Tam player. Uh, and I was also told by the way, it seems that his legal case looks like it may be through and it might, and it's going to turn out favorably. So, um, in terms of that, it's, everything's going to be dismissed and it's all going to go away. If that's the case, then his price jumps up immediately too, but that hasn't been announced. The window is slowly closing on the winter transfer window. And then he is a free agent at the end of this, uh, or at the end of June. Um, so all those things, that being said, I'm starting to finally get that hesitation and that pushback that Pavone may, that the rumors of him may be overblown. So having said that, if you don't get Pavone and you sign Costa to a designated player, that to me is not good business. And I don't know what has happened there. You have to do some really good Tam business in order to make Costa a questionable player right now as, as sort of this DP, you know, signing. I mean, that's, that's, that's rolling the dice, Larry. Okay, Josh, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Okay. Let's say Pavone's court case is through. It's over. He's, right. he's free. Everything is behind him. And you could get either Costa or Pavone uh -huh. and knowing Costa's injury track record, and Pavone's track record of playing extremely well for the Galaxy, who do you pursue? Right. Um, who it's, do you it's, pursue? It's Pavone. It's Pavone. Come Pavone. on. It's, I mean, yes. that's, and that's not even hard. You know what you're getting with Pavone. You have yeah, no idea exactly. what you're getting with Costa. Exactly. So, um, it's a, by the way, uh, Giovanni says in our chat room, it doesn't make sense to, he, to, uh, to have uh, Pavone and Costa come. They're both wingers, so who sits? Cabral up top as a striker with Chicharito? Yes, Cabral is going to be up top with Chicharito. Greg yeah. Vanny said it at the end of last year. He's been rather consistent even through this preseason where we only talked to him once. You're going to have somebody up there with Chicharito. It's probably going to be Cabral or it's going to be Jovalich or he might have moved Grand Sur into that. You, everybody thinks the Galaxy have too many wingers. And my argument is if you have Christian Pavone, he can play in the center as well. And he has played as a central attacking midfielder and probably could do that. So if you wanted to move him there, but you also have a ton of mid central midfielders. I'm in agreement that you need a central attacking midfielder. So find a cam and get one, but it's not like the galaxy don't have they, like they have too many wingers. Um, Grand Sur is a winger. Uh, you could have Pavone as a winger. Costa is a winger. Uh, you could play all three of those guys at the same time in the same formation, right? And, and be just fine. And there would be no issues with that. You could also put it, you have Victor Vasquez in the middle. You have Sasha Kleshin in the middle. You have Marky Delgado. You have Revelison. You have Efrain Alvarez. You have Saldana. You have all the, I can pack the middle of that. I'm not saying there's game changers in there, by the way. And I right. think you could put anybody, but don't get concerned about Samuel Grandsir and where he's going to play. He will find minutes. He will change games. He will do the things that he wants to do. So that, those are the types of things that you have to watch for. Don't just assume that because the Galaxy have, quote unquote, a bunch of wingers that they wouldn't bring in to. I'm just telling you that right now, Costa seems like a more likely signing and that Pavone rumors may be overblown. I could be totally wrong on that. That's more of a an assumption on some things that I was told than it would be that like it's it's hard facts. Right. But I want to be, I want to be upfront with everybody. I don't want people just to think this Pavone thing is going to happen. It's going to be a walk yeah. in the park and that he for sure wants to come back to Los Angeles. You know, you were talking about, about the galaxy. So having so-called too many wingers, I, I compare this a lot to the national football league where you can never have enough good cornerbacks. Right. And I think it's the same thing in soccer. You can never have enough good wingers. People, uh, people in the chat yeah. room, by the way, are saying more Jovalich, right? They want to see more Jovalich as son. I do. I, I like to see him too. The second highest goals plus assists per ninety um, out of anybody besides Chicharito was was Jovalich. Jovalich was second, uh, and by the way, Victor Vasquez was third. Um, so that whenever you put all that into into order of how you're doing things. Now, Jovalich didn't play that many minutes. He was effective whenever he did play some minutes, which is why his yeah. numbers are so high. But overall, pretty small sample size for him. Nice um, game against LAFC last season. Yeah. I mean, he, I think he's a good player. I'm, I'm excited. He but he's also a chess and master. He, and he, yeah, chess master. How about that, huh? Wow. He's crazy. Good for him. Craziness. So anyway, so that's with Costa and 
Pavone, and that's sort of where I think I sit. So, I mean, the Costa rumor, again, continues to sort of move to that area where Kevin reported on Friday that, you know, it seemed to be headed in that direction. I don't remember his exact wording, but I know who he was talking to, and I could be behind that and say, yeah, it makes sense. Everybody is sort of assuming that this deal eventually gets done with Costa. So Costa's coming. Now, I still don't know if it's Tam or DP, whether I heard it was DP today, and that's sort of final. It wasn't final, and I don't know that that's the case. Um, so keep that in mind when you look at all this stuff. All right. All right. All right. There we go. I'm glad, I'm glad we got through that. Larry, I want to get to your list because okay. I know you've, you, you, whenever I asked you to come on and by the way, I asked like seven people, you're the last person I tried to get on here. It was, it <laughs> That's was a long, of it, course, Thank it was you a very much. long list. There were a lot of really good people and I settled on you. So, so um, you were, you, you, so you were desperate. Thank you, you very much. Yeah. I, you know, had I planned a little better, I doubt you'd be on this show right now. I mean, yeah, ultimately yeah. this weekend I did nothing but, you know, mess around yeah. and play trains in my front yard. I should have been yeah, planning. I should have gone out. I should have gone out <laughs> and had some dinner somewhere. I knew it. I knew it. Um, so, uh, <laughs> all joking aside though, um, okay. let's get to your list. The most, what now, how did you okay. title it again? Well, you know, I started covering this team in 2005, and since, again, like I said earlier, I, pu- I put myself out to pasture. I thought I'd put together a list of the 10 most disappointing players I've covered with the Galaxy. Okay, let's start. And at- there were a lot of players to go through, but I came, I whittled it down to a list of 10. All right, um, let's uh, let's start with 10. I want to do this, okay. you know, Tonight Show style. Let's, let's count it back. So number 10. Okay, we'll count it back. Number 10, I came up with Abel Xavier. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, here's a guy with a great pedigree, played with Liverpool, AS Roma, PSV, Eindhoven, Everton. He had the exactly zero goals and 21 appearances. All right. And he was, the only thing that stood out about his game was his bleach blonde hair. Yeah, that was, that was, yeah. th- that was ahead of it. Um, uh, definitely. Um, yep. so, so I'll give you that. Okay. Number, number nine, number nine was a, was a goaltender, Carlo Cudicini, Carlo Cudicini, the man Again, who hated the press Chelsea and just, yeah, didn't, didn't particularly care for dealing with the media. Just, he was, he was not the rock that the galaxy had hoped for when they signed him. Uh, just, no, it just, just did not work. He, he, he was a rock, Larry. He stood in one yeah. place and the balls rolled right over him. So I, I, I agree. He was rock. Uh, that was, that was exactly what he is. All right. Number, number eight, N- number oh, eight. I had, oh, did, are we, we on eight? Did I do it wrong yeah. already? 10, nine and eight. Okay. Yeah. Number eight, I had Joe Corona and here was a guy who, who had more than, than 20 caps with the national team, the U S national team. And just, he was not the dominant force that I expected him to be. I mean, he was okay. He was serviceable, but just did not have the impact I thought he would on this team. Nice guy. Right. You know, decent player, but just, I don't know, just, I don't think the Galaxy got as much out of him as they hoped to. Okay. Uh, Number seven, sir. Number seven. Good old Michael Ciani. Uh, French defender. No, not so much for his play, but the the car he he, uh, drove. Nice white McLaren. He leased it, Uh, by the way. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, at least it, here was a guy who was built like a linebacker, and he and he played like um, he, he a played fl- like he played like a guard. He just <laughs> did not move very well, and just uh, again, extremely disappointed player. And the Galaxy, as I think you I think you may have known, I certainly knew that the Galaxy were warned about signing this guy. He is not a good player, but they signed him anyway. It seemed like a desperate move. When they brought this guy in, he was the only person that ever got like angry at the press in front of me. Like whenever it, he was blaming us for his poor goalkeeping, like he's <laughs> it, and and granted, we always get into the it's not their fault, right? Like you, you sort of sit there and sometimes goalkeepers just can't help it. I didn't think that was the case with him. Yeah. Uh, what are we on? Number six now? Number six, I go with goalkeeper Dan Kennedy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, when the when Bruce Arena brought him in, I thought it was a good move because he obviously they were looking for a goalkeeper. And then, of course, in the regular season over in 2016 on his first goal kick, he uh, he tears his groin, and that pretty much ends his career. That was it. I think he played three games, and that was it. He's a nice guy, and just, I that mean, was- I remember sitting in the press box. I can't remember who was sitting next to me, and I see him whipping, and I'm thinking to myself, he just tore a groin muscle. Yep. yep. Got- I remember whenever yeah. that happened, you looked at me and said, that's his groin. It's done. Yep. And I'm like, okay, uh, number five, cool. sir. Number five, number, number five, another phenomenal defender, Leonardo, Leonardo, one good year when, when the press voted him a defender of, of the year. But as I said, before the, uh, before the show started, you can always count on him to make at least one mistake per game. 
that would cost the Galaxy either a goal or a great scoring chance for the opposition. Okay. Uh, we go to number four, sir. Number four. At one time, this man was the highest paid defender in Major League Soccer, the one and only Jurgen Shelvick. I was going to say, that was, I, 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 that was my L.A. Times uh, writing time. I broke the news that the L.A. Galaxy signed Jurgen Shelvick as one of the highest paid players, one of the highest paid defenders in the league. I think that ended up changing by the middle of the year. Somebody made a little bit more, but he was at one time the highest paid defender in Major League Soccer, Jurgen Shelvick. Was, was he worth the investment, wasn't he? Holy smokes. All right, wow. uh, we're, we're at number three now, right? Number three, uh, this guy was a legend back in the U.K., and out here, uh, nothing legendary about his game, Steven Gerrard. Of course, when he came here, he was hurt. You know, he, had, he admittedly was hurt and just did not have the impact that people thought he would. You know, nice guy, but just he couldn't stay healthy. No. Always had leg problems. No, no. problems, always. Right. We are, we're in the top three now. So yeah, number, so three. number two. Oh, oh, did we already do three? Was three Gerrard? Yeah, okay, three so, was Gerrard. Okay, now two. Number two is a combo. The lovable Dos Santos brothers, Giovanni yeah. and Jonathan. Giovanni came here in 2015, Jonathan in 2017. And I think disappointment just scratches the surface of what these guys were. Yep, just, I, 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 I agree. I think, I think Giovanni more than Jonathan. Okay, all right, so that's your number Again, two. both of them just could not stay healthy. Number one most number disappointing one. player is number one most disappointing player Juan Pablo Angel JPA. Yep, when the the former New York Red Bull standout when the Galaxy got him in 2011, Bruce Arena made the trade at draft headquarters and draft day, and the press room groaned because of Angel's track record of scoring goals. Well, he didn't work out, <laughs> to put it bluntly. He didn't work out. Yeah, no, it, it didn't. And and he he, yeah. he basically. By the way, people said that you left off people Gonzalez, who I think also could have made that list somewhere as well. Yeah, he wasn't too bad. <laughs> of course, you know the rumor with people is that after one game, Zlatan just tore into him, mm -hmm. and that was it. And Gonzalez wasn't the same player after that. I was thinking about him, but I think. Siani and Shelvick were more disappointed than he was. Okay, I, I, I he was one of the higher higher pay players. I'm just saying, yeah. as as the list goes, as the the snubs of your top ten most disappointing, you're gonna get the most most stick for not having people on there. So yeah, I understand that. True. You I, I would them. put it maybe number eleven. I, I, I would I will say this, boys and girls, that um, I did not edit this list. I did not know it was coming. So therefore, this is Larry's list, and and that would he, you agree with this list? I I mean, I think not having people on there is probably your biggest thing. Yeah, um, I was thinking. I was thinking about him. I was thinking about him. I I mean, I see. I didn't watch uh, uh, Xavier play. Abel Xavier play. So like, just barely at the end, whenever I first started covering things, was he still? I think he got traded that year. Like two thousand eight was the was yeah. the end. So whenever I started watching them. Um, the only thing I remember about Xavier is that bleach blonde hair. I'm telling you. Yeah, and and so certainly maybe there's maybe this, but I mean, people needs to find. A, I think people needs to find a find a place on that list because I, I mean, right. you know, I mean, that's fine. Don't change it. Let's let's put him a number eight instead of Joe Joe, Joe Corona. Let's put people in there. <laughs> that's, oh wow! See, Joe Corona just got a reprieve. And I, by yeah. the way, I think Joe Corona fits into the very okay. He was, but there were expectations, and I think that's where you're getting as well. It's like you know, yeah. you know, if you're Zlatan Ibrahimovic and you come in and you're expected to be the best player in Major League Soccer, but you're, you know, you're you're maybe one of the top thirty or forty players. That's disappointing. That type of thing. That didn't happen. Zlatan was the best player that ever played in Major League Soccer. Yeah, um, we'll see. If, we'll see if that continues. Um, yeah. The whole day. there you go. There's my list. All right. Very good. Well, we got it through another uh, another show here, so I'm glad we made it all the way through. That was good. Um, some little news coming out. We'll see what's sort of happening here for the rest of the uh, the week. Again, the Galaxy just sort of ramping up, but Vanny sort of led us to believe that there were signings coming and that there were signings on deck. I, you know, a lot of times it takes a little bit of a of a spark in order for us to figure out what those are and to sort of start figuring out uh, who's coming next. So give it some time to play out. Uh, Vanny said, are you, are you confident the galaxy will sign somebody that will shake the foundation? Are you confident a no. move of that caliber will be coming? No, no, 
No, not even close. No, Any so, move will be coming? <laughs> well, well I, I expect moves to be coming. I expect that the team will get better because of these moves. But if you're going to use a designated player spot on, on Douglas Costa, then you're you're gambling everything on, yeah. on him. Everybody in the chat room, everybody who's been watching this LA Galaxy team says you need a DP that is absolutely rock solid. You need somebody who advances this team. I mean, preferably somebody who plays, in my opinion, central attacking midfield would be great. Um, and you need a game changer on number 10, a guy who's going to create a guy who can play 90 minutes of every game and be a designated player that affects every single game. That is a problem and a headache for teams to match. You can't tell me if Douglas Costa comes in and is the player that he, he maybe is ex- could, could possibly have been expected to be like two or three or four years ago whenever he was playing, you know, with with Bayern or, or whether it was Juventus, whenever he was in some of these top forms, then maybe there's a chance that he's that type of player. Having said that, it's a gamble. It's a gamble. It's a huge gamble. It basically is gambling their season on one player, if that's the case. Now, if he's on a targeted allocation money deal, if it ends up being on the TAM, there's more wiggle room for the Galaxy still to affect this roster and make these things. So um, that's sort of where we sit um, with everything. So Galaxy still about four players short of a 30-man roster, according to the signings. Uh, still could be some players that move up or move down, but even Greg Vanny said that he had about three spots open. Chat room pointed out that with the uh, the international slots as well, the Galaxy have seven of eight used right now for assuming Carlos Harvey has a green card. Um, which we're, we are assuming that still to this point until we're told otherwise. Um, and I still ask all the time and I still don't get an answer. So it's fine. We'll get there eventually. Um, and so when you look at that, the galaxy would be out of international slots if they sign one more international. That being said, I don't consider that a big hurdle. I consider it the galaxy able to go out and buy one if they need one from somebody. They will find one if they need one. So I don't think that's a hurdle. If the Galaxy want to sign two more internationals, they'll go out and figure out a way to sign two more internationals. Um, they have a spot for one, and they just need to buy buy a spot. And remember, whenever Dennis came in um, in that 2018 season, 2019, I'm trying to remember exactly when it was. but 2018, Ga- I believe. Yeah, 2018. They had more than the eight allowed international signings, and we talked right. about that with Fabio Alvarez and and uh, a whole bunch of guys sort of coming into that uh, that team. So anyway. Don't, don't necessarily say it. By the way, uh, people are calling out Jermaine Jones as possibly somebody who's very disappointing for the LA Galaxy. I thought he played okay. He was I just, thought he played okay. Yeah, it's fine. You, um, certainly play, you certainly played with an edge. You D- did Diop. See, Cameron says Diop, and I will say that what did you expect to happen from Diop whenever he came in? Like He was a, he was a Galaxy 2 signing at one point and eventually got moved up to What were you expecting that to happen? Clement uh, Diop. Yeah, it's not too late to buy an international slot. Pele van Anholt, very disappointing, but injury problems. So I tend not, like, he played in two games or three games <laughs> and then got injured. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's been some bad luck the Galaxy have had, too. Because um, I thought Pele van Anholt looked to be at least for through one or two games <laughs> serviceable. And then that was done with as yeah. well. So anyway, they that's what we're saying. One game in so long, Dan. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. They're asking when MLS is having their media day. I don't know. They don't include me in that. They don't think I'm a big enough outlet for that. Usually, Kevin. I wonder with the pandemic going on if we're even going to have one. Well, like I think do, they do it on I'm Zoom. Just, I think they do it on Zoom. Yeah, yeah, on Zoom. Yeah. So, so that was certainly, uh, certainly. You know, uh, you know, I was never invited to one of those media days. Yeah, I mean, the only reason I get invited is because Kevin makes them invite me. That's that's why he's like, why aren't you inviting Josh? And then they're, you know, to appease the LA Times, yeah. they're like, we don't care if he comes. <laughs> and so, you know, I'm like Kevin's plus one on those to whenever I go to those. <laughs> he doesn't Kevin's even buy significant, me. significant other. Yeah, he doesn't even buy me dinner for that either. I, uh, I don't understand. So anyway, that's where we sit on uh, on all of those. Uh, the We will have another show on Thursday night. Um, so we will be rocking and rolling as normal on Thursday night, getting you ready for it sort of for the weekend and catching up on the other news. Larry, is there anything else that we need to get to before we get out of here? No, sir. Just uh, thanks again for uh, for rescuing me from the open sea. And uh, it's always a pleasure uh, speaking with you and uh, speaking to all your 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 legion of Corner of the Galaxy fans. Always, always, always an honor talking with them and uh, hearing from them. Th- it's it's. Always, I hope to make a few home games this year. I hope to be there. Well, you already were claiming tickets for. You already asked me for tickets for the for the home opener. So we'll opener. We'll, we'll make that happen for you. No problem. And a parking pass as well too. Wow! Wow! <laughs> Just demanding is what it is. I no, it's fine. Bucks to yeah, park down there. I know it's expensive. <laughs> um. By the way, before we close out, and uh, I think this is an important one. I didn't tell Larry. Uh, about this either, but um, I've been following along. If if you know the guys over at the Riot Squadcast, um, you know that producer Ben, uh, his wife has been battling cancer. 
Um, and uh, unfortunately we heard, you know, earlier this week that she passed away. And so, um, so everybody here at corner of the galaxy and I, you know, I, I told, I tell the his family. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Ben and his two daughters are, are amazing. Ben is great. Um, I knew Ben before he was even doing some of the riot squad cast stuff and he came into the studio to sort of see how I put together the show and just super smart guy, super nice guy. And that whole family is just ridiculously nice. Uh, I, I tell the story and it's not a good story, but when I went over to record, um, with the riot squad cast guys, um, they were, they, whenever I was leaving, um, I think Laura came out and sort of said goodbye and hi at the same time. Cause I didn't see her whenever I came in and stuff like that. She was very nice, but all the stories I hear about her is just how incredibly, uh, nice she was and how she treated people like family. And I, I sometimes think, uh, though I'm not very re religious in this, that people who, who have an understanding maybe somewhere deep in their, in their subconscious, Larry, that their time on this earth is going to be short, tend to be some of the nicest people in the world. Uh, and I think that her, her legacy certainly lives through, through Ben, who was, who was an outstanding gentleman and through the two daughters. And I have no doubt that they will carry on her legacy and everything else. But our, our, our thoughts are with Ben and, and his daughters and his entire family and, and Chris and Ed, um, everybody over there. Cause I know it's been a, been a tough time. And so, um, you know, rest in peace, Laura, definitely. Um, and, and, um, you know, it's just, it's a sad day for everybody. So if you see those guys, um, and you see Ben or anything, make sure you give them a hug, give them a high five, uh, COVID appropriate, of course, uh, if, if they're there, but, um, th I know those guys are hurting right now. I just wanted to send out our wishes to them. So, uh, I hate, I hate to say it, but the good ones always go first. It, it seems that way. And I've certainly been around at least a little bit, a little bit longer than, than some in here. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it feels that way. And just with Laura, you could just, uh, from all the stuff I hear, she sounds like an amazing person. And so gone way too soon. So, yeah. so, uh, we send our condolences from COG. So, uh, Larry, if you have nothing else, I will, uh, I will close this show out. If you're looking for I'm Mr. Fine, Larry Morgan you on can't Twitter, find me. you can't find him. He's not there. No, no, no. he's not going to be there. But you so. can find me through Josh. <laughs> That's right. Just send me a, send me a message. We'll get it. Uh, if you're looking for me on Twitter, it's at Jay Guessman, J G U E S M A N. And of course at galaxy podcast head on over to corner of the galaxy.com where you can find all of our writings all of our articles all of our podcasts all of our videos right there subscribe to our youtube channel subscribe to our podcast all that fun stuff uh you can find it right there so for everybody here at corner of the galaxy mr larry morgan on twitter i'm josh pato guess when you've been listening to you've been watching corner of the galaxy from the box on corner of the galaxy.com have a great one everybody you've been listening to the corner of the galaxy podcast on corner of the galaxy.com you can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. Fans, we thank you for listening, and we ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Arajo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everybody. <laughs>